Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the BDU podcast. And today I'm delighted to have Danielle, who's kindly agreed to uh, provide some nice insights of what she does here in Black Demon. Hi, Danielle. Hey, Trevor. And once again, we were just discussing the weather um, offline, um, how it's so very hot over there, and we're actually experiencing a bit of sun over here in Ireland for a very rare time. So as I ask all um, you know, um, interviewees on this podcast, the first question, can you please tell us a bit about yourself and what you do here in Block Demon? Yeah, of course. So um, my background is actually in project management. I started my career working for a tech startup here in Charlotte, North Carolina, that was focused on providing call center technology as well as consulting services and SaaS products. And so now here at Block Damon, I'm a senior project manager and I work on the Node Ops team where I'm essentially responsible for the engineers in strategic planning and also I work alongside our engineering managers as well as our squad leads, delivery managers, etc. to oversee the overall direction and coordination of delivery and node operations. Fantastic. Just for our listeners who might not be you know immersed in the blockchain world, what exactly is a node in a blockchain world? Yeah, so um, a node is essentially what we manage here at Block Damon. It's kind of the the setup of our whole entire business. And so the node ops team is responsible for every single node um, that a customer purchases. We make sure that we do all of the maintenance as well as the updates of all of the nodes. And then of course, if anything happens to go wrong, which usually it doesn't, and we always try to make sure that it doesn't, um, our team is responsible for fixing that. Um, We also provide all of the infrastructure. So essentially, like I said, our team just makes sure that everything for our customers is up and running. Fantastic. And can you tell me um, what a typical, you know, day involves for Danielle um, when she's carrying out her duties? Yeah, so um, I typically start my day at about 5.45 um, in the morning where I like to just start with a quick morning routine, um, get a workout in before getting online. And I also always like to listen to the news before getting started with work. And then I usually will get online around 9 a.m., um, start my morning with a catch up, um, answering any Slack messages or emails that came in overnight. And then I spend typically the first half of my day in meetings. Um, most of my colleagues are in Europe. So there's a time zone difference where, you know, in the mornings of my time is the evening of theirs. And it could be anything that these meetings range from, whether it's just project catch up, making sure that we're on the same page for any work that needs to be done, resolving any issues. Um, and then from there, I will usually work in the evenings where I'm actually doing my work. Um, and that could be anything depending on the day um, from documentation, project follow-ups, planning for a new sprint or a new quarter, um, doing anything necessary to unblock the engineers, updating JIRA, um, anything that really supports the engineering team. And then after work, I usually will end my day with some quality time with my dog, um, a walk, and then dinner, reading a good book, and then of course, planning for the next day. Fantastic. And I suppose, is there anything you'd wish you'd known uh, at the start of your career that which would have helped you along the way that you know now, which would have been an important aspect, um, Daniel? Yeah, so I feel like I've learned so many things within my career, but one thing that I wish I had known beforehand is just um, being comfortable with embracing fear. I feel like you have to get very comfortable with being uncomfortable in Fear is always going to be there, but I feel that if you let that stop you, it can really slow down your growth, um, your opportunities for learning, and ultimately your career progression. I think if I would have let fear, you know, be a blocker for me, I would have never got into the blockchain industry. Um, I knew nothing before working here, so I'm glad that I didn't let that get in the way, and I wish that was something that I just embraced a little bit more in the beginning of my career. Fantastic. I love that. It's a real plus one. And I suppose if you were to outline um, a skill um, which you which you think is so fundamentally important in the role that you're operating, that you possess, which allows you to you know, do your job at the highest um, capability that you can. Oh, yeah. So I think one of the most important skills um, that is needed in project management is communication and good communication at that. I think 
having the ability to adapt your communication style effectively, depending on who you're speaking to is super essential in a project management role, especially within an operations team. So I feel that's definitely one of the biggest responsibilities of the job. And it's important to know what information is relevant to the person you're speaking to, um, understanding who to direct certain questions to, and also how to manage the expectations of the person that you are interacting with at any given moment. Fantastic. And I suppose, what gives you positivity um, from a personal setting or during um, a work setting, positivity or energy? What, 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 what kind of the factors that would that help you with that, um, Danya? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest things for me um, in a work setting is the engineers that I get to work alongside with each day. Um, they give me enthusiasm, but they also make tough days a little bit easier. So um, the engineers that I work with are some of the most hardworking, dedicated, fun people to be around. And I think each and every one of them really just inspire me in different ways. They teach me new things every day. And you know, we spend a good portion of our life at work. So it makes it 10 times better when you work with people that you actually like and you enjoy being around. Um, plus working with people who have all of the same common goals as you really helps with keeping the enthusiasm and positivity high when you're working towards something together. Fantastic. And that really aligns so nicely with our community and social learning pillars of part of BDU. That's really excellent. And in terms of is there any exciting news that you can make the listeners aware of that's either happening in Block Demon or in the world of nodes that you've seen in the marketplace? So um, in NodeOp specifically, I feel there's always something like super exciting coming down the line, um, whether that's adding support for new protocols, development work on cool features, um, any type of enhancements to the customer experience, or just process improvements in general, we kind of have our hands in every new and exciting development within the company. So I think um, everyone should just stay tuned. Fantastic. And in terms of, um, you know, if I'm, you know, in university or I'm in a company which is not working with blockchain, but I'd like to get in, you know, I've got, I've got the experience, the background, or I'd like to get the experience and background, what advice tips, if you could bullet point them, would be the most important for somebody to get into the career that you have um, followed, um, Daniel? Yeah, so I think some advice I would offer to someone who was looking to pursue a project management position um, specifically in the blockchain industry is never think that any job, any task, or any responsibility is too big or too small for you. Um, I believe that, you know, having a by any means necessary mindset is very crucial. Um, and in blockchain, you have to be open to change and you have to be willing to adapt um, because things change quickly. They change every day. And I feel for me personally that my career has been successful because although I am a project manager, I'm really willing to do anything. I'm willing to learn anything. And honestly, I'm willing to try anything if it'll help move the project along, if it'll help, you know, improve an initiative or move a task forward, or even if it's just lightening the load on an engineer so that they can focus on their engineering work. Um, I've always been willing to step up to do anything, even if it's not technically in my job description. And not only does that contribute to you being an asset to your team, but it also helps with expanding your knowledge and it can possibly open up other opportunities for you in the future that may be outside of project management or blockchain. Fantastic. And just one final question, just to expand on that. You mentioned expand your knowledge. You know, a lot of time in the blockchain world, you know, employers like to see practical experience, you know, um, you know set up a wallet, you know, uh, engage in staking. Would you have any practical advice for someone, you know, if, if they're going for an interview or they're thinking of getting, you know, um, you know, dipping their toes into the water of nodes, how would they go about, you know, getting that node management or practical hands-on experience, uh, Danielle? 
Yeah, so I think um, one of the best places to start, especially if you were looking into Bob Damon, is our website. I think there's so much good information and knowledge that is on our website in general, even, you know, it's expanded since since I've been working here. And then um, one of my favorite resources, I always say, is Google. I mean, even if, you know, there's still times, even now I've been in this position for a while, there's still things that I don't know. So I always try to you know, look things up on the internet. There's tons of YouTube information, um, podcasts, anything that you can think of. Um, there's so much available information. And then, you know, just finding the, there's a huge blockchain community and most people that I've ever had any type of interactions with, whether it be online at a conference, engineers here at Block Damon, like everyone's willing to answer any questions that you have. Um, one of the things that I'm really big on is I try to do the research myself first. And then if there's something that I still don't understand, then I'll go to someone that's a little bit smarter than me and tell them the information that I found and what I'm still having issues with understanding. So I think you know, I always talk about just the mindset. Um, you're not going to know everything. It's hard to know everything. And like I said, things change on a daily basis, but just having that mindset of, you know, I'm willing to learn, I'm interested in this. So I'm going to do the work to go find the more, more information that's available for me. I think that is um, super important because, you know, like I said, when I started, I didn't have a lot of knowledge, but I was so interested that I made sure that I was always learning new things, trying to figure out what was next um, and asking questions. I ask a million questions every day. And it's it's one of those things when I was talking about fear is that you can't be afraid to ask questions. And on that fantastic note, thank you, Danielle, for um, agreeing to give up your time uh, to appear on this podcast. Um, if you want to find out more um, about what Danielle does, please follow the hyperlinks uh, below this podcast. Thank you, Danielle, for those valuable insights today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Trevor. Thank you.